today you see exactly how to sew a jacket that has a collar, a long separating zipper and a hemband, something like this where you have a collar, the zipper is in there, it goes all the way down and the zipper is also enclosed in the hemband in the center. It's a technique that can be universal for a lot of patterns that have this style, so you see exactly how to do it, stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today is all about sewing one of the most important features you see in jackets, and that is the separating zipper that goes all along the front, in the center. This will include a collar piece and a hemband. The way that you sew this is pretty much the same in all these patterns with a few variations sometimes, usually seam allowance. Usually patterns will tell you what length of zipper you need for each size or style that you're sewing. Sometimes you'll need to trim away the zipper on the top, which is something that is totally possible. 30 inch zippers are what I usually can find here, so I just buy those and trim them off if needed. The typical length that you need for jackets like this can go anywhere from 26 to 30 inches. One of the sewing plans for this season that is keeping me happy is sewing jackets and I've been doing exactly that. I took the opportunity to film this technique for you as a standalone technique. It can be almost universal for any pattern or it could be a really good guidance for you if you really want to follow the instructions and you see a minor difference. But if you follow what I've filmed, you will be able to do it for sure. I have included there little extras, little bonuses, things that you can do as option to elevate the technique and to make the garment look pretty. We are going to see how this collar is finished. It's very neat. You can see the zipper tape is in between the two layers of the collar. So we're going to see how to do that. The other thing is you can see a zipper tape right there. It's quite neat. It doesn't bother me. You can sew it like that for sure. You see a lot of ready to wear is sewn exactly like that and it's fine. Just make sure your zipper matches, that's all I care about. The other thing that you'll see as an option is to cover that zipper tape with something. Usually it's twill tape, you'll see that in some instructions. I don't have that so I made myself some tape made out of linen but cut on the straight of grain. It's not bias tape, you don't want bias tape for this because you want this to not stretch at all. Bias tape stretches because it's cut on the bias, you want to cut this on the straight of grain but we are going to see these details within the tutorial and you can opt in and out of them. It's all up to you. Both ways will give you a nice result. At the bottom you have a hemband. It's one piece folded over and you can see that the zipper is sandwiched in between there as well. So we're going to cover these things. I'm going to show you two ways to sew the hemband. One in a very traditional way, which is how you would usually do it. And then if you want to experiment and have a little bit of fun, there's also a really, really strange looking burrito roll. I actually did this burrito roll with a jacket I made in 2018 and it worked really well. And I had it tucked in the back of my technique library in my head. Back then, I only filmed that technique partially. I didn't really film how to do it. I just filmed myself sewing it. So I decided I would go ahead and show you that. You won't find this typically in any pattern instruction, but it is possible if you want to try that. So a lot to see. I'll stop talking. Let's jump right into sewing zippers, collars, and handbands. What I've got here on the table are what you'll see in a lot of patterns that have a zipper, a collar, and a hemband. You know, it could be any pattern, not just one specific pattern. The technique will be pretty much the same. You have a center front there of your garment. This is a knit, so there is vertical stretch. That's why there is some interfacing there on the center front to prevent this from stretching vertically. You never want your knit to be stretching vertically while you're sewing your zipper. That could give you a really wavy finish. It does not look nice. If you are doing this with a pattern, Pattern that is a woven then you still need to interface this just to give it a bit of structure there in the center in any case I would always suggest interfacing this this jacket is aligned so I really don't want that interfacing used in the center front to stabilize to be seen so I think 5 eighths of an inch wide is okay if it's a line jacket you can go and stabilize with one inch wide in this case it's a little narrower because I don't really want this interfacing to be seen at a later stage you have your separating zipper your hemband now this this one, 
also has a strip of interfacing there. The bottom of the zipper will be enclosed within there. So you don't want that area to be stretching out either. And then here we have two collar pieces that are identical. They are exactly the same. The zipper will be enclosed up to the top as well there. So I have interfaced both sides of these collars both pieces. I don't want to just interface one and have one stable and then the other one not be because they'll both be in contact with the zipper. Basically you want to eliminate any vertical stretch that your knits have in contact with the zipper that you're going to sew in. I've placed it like this. Now you're going to sew the collar onto the neckline. You're going to take away some length there because of the seam allowance. Same as the hemband to there. Once you've got these three pieces sewn you have one extended piece where the zipper is going to go. In this case, the top of the zipper is going to go right up to the edge of the collar over there, discounting the seam allowance on the top of the collar. And this one is going to reach the middle of the band there. At this point, it looks like it won't reach it, but remember the seam allowance is there and this zipper is going to fit this jacket perfectly. Most patterns will tell you what length zipper you need. If you have an extra long zipper, you can always trim away the top. That's something that you can do. In this case, a 26 inch zipper is going to fit this perfectly. Let's go ahead and sew the collar to the neckline and the band to the bottom and then we can start putting on our zipper. What I've got here is the body of the jacket and I've got a collar pinned to the neckline right sides together there all along the edge. This collar is drafted to meet exactly the length of the neckline. You don't have to stretch it in or anything like that. You might find in other patterns that the collar is a tad, tad smaller, that you have to stretch the collar to meet the neckline just a little bit. Not in this case. The important thing is that you need to sew one collar to the neckline right sides together. Usually these collars are exactly the same. The second collar will be sewn on later. Here I have the band on top of the bottom of the jacket. The band is slightly smaller than the jacket. So you divide your band in four, you divide the bottom of your jacket in four. I put pins, this is the center back, that is the other quarter, and this is the other quarter. And you can see that you need to stretch the band slightly to make them fit. So you want to sew with your band on the top and the jacket on the bottom and go stretching the band slightly to meet. Here in the center, try to not stretch and just sew it normal one on one for about an inch and a half so that this is nice and even, there's no pucker or nothing like that. And then from here onwards, stretch the band to meet, just to make the zipper area a bit neater. I'm sewing the collar to the neckline just with a straight stitch. This is not an area of your body where you need to worry about having a zigzag stitch or something that needs to stretch. Also, I think you need to be very exact with your seam allowance, especially at the center fronts, because any discrepancy you have, whether you take a smaller or larger seam allowance, will impact the finished length of the garment before you sew in your zipper. So just be really careful to sew exactly the seam allowance that your pattern is using. In this case, I'm using 3 8 but it could be different with another pattern. Now to sew on the hemband to the bottom of the jacket, I will be using a shallow zigzag. This is an area of the hips where when you move and you see it, you do need the garment to stretch nicely. The shallow zigzag will look like a straight stitch. It will be nice and accurate and will just allow that stretch that you need for a garment like this. When you started at the center front, you also needed it to be super exact because it will also impact the finished length when you sew in your zipper. So just be careful there in the center fronts and throughout the whole garment that you're sewing the correct seam allowance and being as accurate as you can. Make sure you're only stretching the band, not the garment that's underneath because if you stretch out the bottom of the jacket, you might end up with a wavy hemband and that doesn't look very nice either. So just be careful you're stretching only the band. I think it's a good idea to search the center front just to neaten it out so there's no raw edges there. This center front doesn't need to be searched or anything, just this main piece. Take your band and just meet this edge with the other edge there so that you're essentially folding the hem band in half like this and make a mark. This is where your zipper is going to stop at the bottom. So the zipper is going to start right there. Here on this side where the collar is, you're going to push your seam allowance up towards the collar and the zipper is going to stop about 3 eighths of an inch from the top because you need that extra space to be able to sew the second layer of the collar there later so you don't want your tape to go all the way up. Now take your zipper and place it right sides together with the fabric. That means that the zipper pull is going to be touching the right side of the fabric. You're going to be looking at the zipper like this. And align this raw edge with the raw edge of the fabric 
will stop right there where you put your pin just a tad higher than that like a sixteenth of an inch or something and that's where the zipper is going to start push the seam allowance towards the hem band here as well and then we pin the zipper all the way up to the top this excess here will be dealt with let's pull that down a little bit make sure that zipper stop is right below that 3 8 seam allowance that I'd mentioned before there on the top so right below it that's going to go there and what you do with this excess is fold it diagonally like this at a 45 degree angle seam allowance of the collar is facing up towards the collar and it's got the exact length for this jacket so I'm going to go ahead and finish pinning that I like to also hand baste it I just think it's more accurate to hand baste each of these pins lifts everything up and has the possibility of shifting when you're sewing so I'd rather not do that and just give it a quick hand base it takes no time at all so just to make it easier if you take the right side of the garment the wearer's side that's where I usually start pinning the first half of the zipper tape okay that half of the zipper has been sewn already I want to pin the other half while keeping it together I don't want to separate them and there's one reason for that and that is just to make sure that all the seams match and that the zipper is not going to be wonky so take this other half that's still raw bring it up here hold it like this in your hand and then just flip this all over to the other side so that you have your zipper tape looking up at you and now we can align the same thing on the other half while keeping all of this together so make sure your bands align here right there that will make sure that the bottom of the center fronts are always even here on this other band you also have a mark marks the center of the hem band and align the bottom of your zipper right there as well just like the other side all the same then go all the way up to the top and make sure these collars match that they are in the exact same spot so that they match there as well seam allowance always goes up towards the collar here this at the top as well fold it diagonally out of the, out of the way and then you can go ahead and pin the whole rest of the zipper tape you can also hand baste it if you want once that's done i'm going to confirm everything is matching and everything is really neat and then for ease of sewing then you can actually separate these zippers and sew them separately with the presser foot but for this stage i like to keep them together at all times if you try it once you might see how accurate this is and how less stressful it is rather than trying to deal with the zipper tapes separately and trying to match everything up this is just so much easier the zipper has been basted but not sewn and before sewing it i'm just gonna take this apart a little bit and i want to sew the second collar on first before doing the definite stitch on the zipper i'm gonna push this out of the way right there just to get that area to be free and align these and I'm going to align both collar pieces right sides together and sew this top seam we're sewing these collar pieces together but don't catch that zipper tape that's underneath just move that out of the way okay so the second collar piece is on now let's go ahead and open this whole thing we can just separate these this is the right side of the garment facing up this is the bottom where the hem band is we're going to bring this hem band that's dangling from the zipper and just wrap it around the zipper so you have hem band hem band zipper sandwiched in between and this seam allowance we're going to fold it to meet the one that's at the back i'm going to put a pin there so we do the same thing with the other side and here on this side we've already sewn this collar we're going to take this and fold it out of the way all this business there with the extra tape and just fold this over itself have the two collar pieces right sides together we do the same with the seam allowance here we fold it back like that to match the seam on the other side take this zipper tape out of the way there and then just align these here i'm not going to be hand basting this i'm happy that the zipper is hand basted inside so that's going to help it not move so now we can sew one zipper tape it'll be pretty simple just start at the bottom go all the way make sure the seam allowances stay where they have to all the way up to the top it'll be one straight seam 
I'll repeat this process the same on the other centers. So I'll bring this collar over, fold this up by 3 8 which is the same seam allowance you had on the other side. Meet them up right there, they need to be very exact. Take the excess zipper tape out of the way, take the bottom of the band, fold it at the bottom, wrong sides together, same seam allowance, 3 8 bring it up to meet where that seam allowance is there and the zip is going to be right there at the bottom. Now we change to a zipper presser foot. I've got the edge of my zipper presser foot touching the edge there of the zipper teeth that's as close as I can get to them so that's how I'm sewing. The edge of this side is against the edge of the zipper tape right there. Trim this away. Now what happens is when you flip this collar, the zipper stop is right at the top, right at the edge where these two collars meet. And this is enclosed right there. And then this is why this was folded previously, like that, because this is going to now cover the seam that we had sewn previously. It'll look super neat inside. This is why I'd also searched this edge right here. And when I was placing the zipper tape, I was making sure that the zipper tape was covering this by a hair, like a tiny, tiny bit, so that all you see here is a zipper tape. It doesn't look ugly. If you interface this by an inch, when this is folded like this, you might see uh, a little bit of that interfacing, and I always think that doesn't look very nice either. So this is just covering it, and it's just enough. This is how the bottom looks, and when we flip it, your zipper comes from between. The, this is why this was folded, so that it would meet this seam right there and it's very neat. So that is the essence. This is how I would do any jacket that has this hemband and collar feature, which is pretty common. You'll see in a lot of patterns and I would always sew it in the same way. I'll repeat on this other side, just sew a straight seam with the zipper, press the foot and flip it right sides out. I want to show you here an alternative finish that you can use to cover up the zipper tape if you want to. In some ready to wear, you might see twill tape used. I don't have any of those. I just made myself. I use linen cut on the straight of grain. This is not a bias binding piece at all. It's straight of grain. I don't want it to stretch. That was an inch wide. And then I put it through my bias tape maker just to get these folds so that both edges are clean. And this is what I use to cover up the zipper tape right here. So you can see the edge of the teeth that's been sewn on. And then that edge that you see sewn on there is actually the top stitching that you see from the right side of the garment. This comes from underneath the collar and the same at the bottom. It comes from underneath the hemband. So I'll show you how you can do that if you want to, if you want to cover up your zipper tape. Although it doesn't really bother me, zipper tapes don't really bother me that much, but it is a really nice finish right there. So I have this tiny little piece left over and I'll show you really quickly how this is done. I have the garment wrong sides up. This second collar piece that will come and meet the seam hasn't been sewn yet. Just leave it like that for now. Take this piece that you're gonna use, whether it's a twill tape or something like this, I think this looks really nice. All you need to do is come behind this collar for a little bit, just a little bit. You would align this, whether it's twill tape or something like this, close to there of the zipper teeth. I only have a small piece to show you, but you would just pin this along the zipper tape that you have here, all the way down to here where you have your hemband, and you will also just stop a little underneath there. You don't need to go all the way down. Once you sew this edge on, this won't be seen from the right side of the garment at all. You're just sewing this to the edge of the zipper tape to cover it. And then later on, this is going to be top stitched right there. And that is the seam that you're gonna see on the outside of the garment. So you would do that first before finishing the collar and the hemband if you want to try something like this. After that's sewn, then this can cover it and you'll see that this little tape will come from underneath the collar and the same would happen here at the bottom where the hemband is. This little tape would come from underneath and cover your zipper tape. In my case with this garment, I'm just leaving my zipper tape there. It's not going to bother me. It's something you can try if you want to. It's not hard. Just extra steps, you know?
Before I sort out this inner collar, I have snipped along the curve of the neckline just to help it lie nicer. And this edge of the collar, I've pressed it in by 3 eighths of an inch. Maybe your knit doesn't take pressing that well, in that case just fold it. This specific fabric can press really well. And all we're going to do is line this up there to that seam, all along there, and then top stitch it down and that will finish the collar. There's the inner collar hand basted down, very neat. Now I'm just sewing this using a blind hem presser foot with a needle to the left, that helps everything go super neatly. At the start where the zipper is, it's very bulky, so I have a long stitch length there. This is how it's going to look on the right side and that's how it's going to look on the wrong side. Very neat. Now when you wear your jacket, this is going to fall open and you'll see part of that wrong side of the fabric there. This looks like denim, it doesn't bother me. You press the seam down, you get your band, you fold it in by 3 eighths, you meet the edge and you top stitch it down. I'm going to show you how this looks on this other jacket when it's basted and how I'm sewing that on. I'm going to be doing something alternative with this one. This is the bottom of the center front of the jacket, the inside. You can see my linen tape there covering the zipper so you can't see it and from the outside that top stitching looks like that, it looks really nice. Now this specific area here is way too thick, I, I think I'm going to damage my machine if I try to sew over that little bit right there. So I have folded this band over to the inside and then folded it right on top of that seam right there where this was sewn on before. But right here it's just too many layers, so I just hand sewed that down there. You can barely see it and I'm going to start sewing with the machine right there. So I have hand basted that, I'm going to sew it from the right side of the garment because that's where I want to focus on getting it really neatly, nice and straight stitching rather than sewing it from the wrong because the right side is the visible side. And I'm going to use a presser foot that will help me sew on the edge there. I am going to use a 3.5 stitch length and I'm just going to use a straight stitch for this. Here on the front I'm going through quite a few layers, probably about seven because there's a pocket on the front. Once I get to the back there'll be five layers, so the 3.5 is going to cope much better. That's how the hem band is going to look on the outside and on the inside. Okay, here I have the jacket upside down, I have the collar down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the band on the bottom with a burrito method. And the only way this is going to work is because this fabric is relatively lighter than others. I don't have sleeves sewn on here at all yet, you know, you don't need the sleeves on to be able to finish the band. So if you want to try this out, wait till the very end to sew in your sleeves. And all I'm going to do is roll this up as much as I can. And then this loose end that I have on the band, I want to bring it over like this and meet that seam that we had already done, like that. Everything's going to be fitting really tightly inside this roll. And here on the center front, we are also going to match this, like that. So on one of these ends, I'm going to sew quite close to this, as close as I can get. I won't be able to go all the way. But on the other side, I'm going to leave a nice gap so I can bag my jacket out through there. So that's basically what I want to do. I want to meet these. Here on this edge it won't be too bulky but then it'll start getting bulkier and it'll be it'll look like a worm basically. <laughs> so at the sewing machine I'll just go ahead and pin it and show you. Okay believe it or not this is the jacket it looks really really <laughs> interesting. So I'm gonna start on this side and I left quite a gap here maybe about three inches two and a half inches because I need that space to be able to pull the jacket out of there afterwards. So I'm going to start there. That's the seam I've done before at 3 8 So from the edge I'll be sewing at 3 8 here, all along the bottom, with a narrow zigzag stitch. And over on this side I'm going to get quite close to the edge, although not all the way to the edge. It's impossible because of the bulk of the zipper right there. While I'm sewing, I'm always going to be touching here that I'm not catching the jacket in there on the seam. I just want to sew these layers there. Okay, so it's sewn. And from this opening, I'm just going to start pulling the jacket out of here. This is doable, I've done it before, it's just a little fiddly. Okay, 
almost there and it's done and then you have the seaming closed inside all that needs to happen now is this little area that wasn't closed i'm just going to align that and sew it by hand there and over here the same i'm going to have this area i'm going to fold the seam allowance in meet that area and just slip stitch this by hand and that'll be it then i'll just give it a good press and the band is done okay so that's done the band is clean on both sides those little bits have been sewn by hand very clean if you want you can top stitch that i'm not going to i don't really want to i want it to look nice and clean like that and then all that's left to do is top stitch these center fronts to hold this fabric down flat against the zipper so it's nice and neat that's it that's all that's left to finish this type of garment that has a collar a main body there a jacket and a hemband can be any pattern sometimes the band can be wider down here if it's wider this burrito method that i just shown you would be easier to do That's how that looks. I'm using the quarter inch press foot and it works really well. It just fixes the zipper right there. It's I just can't talk today. The parrots are just, yeah, they won't stop. <laughs> okay, you see that the jacket fits into that burrito roll and it's a really tight fit. It's quite tightly fitted in there. And the reason this worked was because my knit fabric was a medium weight cotton spandex without the sleeves. But if you're working with something heavier, like the other blue jacket you saw in the tutorial, that would not have worked, definitely. If you want to try this, the only thing you would need to adjust on your pattern if you want to, is if, for example, your jacket calls for a 27 inch zipper, make sure you get one that's 28 inches because we're gonna lengthen the jacket by an inch. And your hemband is typically a rectangle. So just make that rectangle two inches taller and get a zipper that is one inch longer than what you need to and then follow the exact same sewing instructions that just means that your hemband is going to be one inch wider giving you more space to stuff all your jacket inside that burrito roll so give that a go if you want to it is really really fun i find it much easier and much faster than doing it the traditional way at least for me because in the traditional way i have to fold it up i have to meet it up to the seam i have to hand baste it and then sew it Whereas with the burrito roll, you just roll it up in one go, pin it, sew it, flip it out and you're done. And then you don't really need to top stitch, you can just hand sew that little bit right there. This is the hemband that was burrito rolled. It's super neat. This is the outside of the garment. This is the inside of the garment. And just this little bit there is hand sewn. You can't tell and it's very neat. I really like this way it looks without the top stitching. It just looks really clean and I really enjoy that. So I wanted to give you that extra you can skip it if you want or if you want to have fun and try something new go ahead and do a burrito roll <laughs> i hope this was helpful the video about these jackets will be up very soon so expect those i really hope to motivate you to sew jackets for this type of weather it's perfect great projects it will really give you a boost when you're able to complete projects like this because jackets tend to be quite expensive and it's really nice to make them for yourself with the fabrics that you like and customize the fit everything i think it's a project that's really worth sewing have a look at a video i made a few weeks ago about my jacket sewing plans have a look there if you want to see what i'm up to you can sort of know the jackets that i'm going to be sewing for the next couple of months see you again very very soon with more jackets bye